so today we are going to discuss about some of the common layer to attacks because i told you there are disgruntled employees in the company these disgruntled employees can do these kind of attacks the users are from the land so now we will talk about some of the common layer to attacks and those attacks are dhcp spoof attack ip spoof attack batch spoof attack arp spoof attack milan hop attack stp attacks so many attacks but remember in order to understand these attacks you have to be familiar with switching technology you have to be familiar with switches that is why in the beginning when i started my session i told you guys who, who know routers who know switches who have done their basic associate level course that is ccna should continue otherwise you go and study for ccna because if you want to understand what is the meaning of dhcp what is the meaning of mac address vlan stp mstp okay i won't be explaining you the routing and switching part yes i will be explaining you what is dhcp spoof attack but you should know what is dhcp so can anyone tell me what is dhcp come on guys don't copy and paste from google <laughs> dhcp spoof attacks what is dhcp first you should know what is dhcp so let me tell you dhcp means dynamic host configuration protocol right mujahid it automatically assigns the ip address to the clients dhcp clients so there is a server who is going to offer the ip addresses there are clients who are going to look, who are going going to take those ip addresses they are looking for an ip addresses this is really really a boon to all the network engineers because see if you are having a setup of 500 pcs you have to go independently individually on each and every pc and give the ip address manually that is very hectic and 100% chances of you doing errors you might conflict you might give the same ip to to system and then there is a conflict so to avoid this they came out with dhcp dynamic host config so initially what happens when you work with dhcp dhcp offers the ip address we call it dora discover offer request and acknowledge we call this as what dora dora means what discover offer request and acknowledge so you see in this particular slide you see the clients are shouting clients are actually doing what broadcast you all must be aware the term broadcast unicast multicast broadcast means one to many when when a pc don't know whom to ask he will do what he will shout he will shout on top of his voice and start asking what ip addresses he will start ip asking ip addresses because see every pc who wants to be in a network every pc who wants to be in a network needs an ip address needs a subnet mask needs a default gateway needs a dns entry there are a lot of stuff that is being configured on a pc so if i want all these settings if i want all these information somebody has to give me either statically or the server so yes i am having a dhcp server my engineer has already built this dhcp server but then dhcp server is waiting like when you go for marriage functions and all or party you see that buffet counter people are waiting with food you know people are waiting standing there some some guy is uh, offering rice some guy is offering biryani some guy is offering curry some guy is offering chapati so people are waiting so dhcp server is also waiting with the tray okay this guy is waiting with a 
with an IP addressing pool. The term is IP address pool. Say 100 IP addresses, 200 IP addresses, 500 IP addresses. So now what is the next move? Somebody is asking on top of his voice, hey, I'm looking for an IP address. I'm looking for a subnet pass. I'm looking for a default gateway. Who's going to give me this credential? Who's going to give me these settings? And there comes DSCP server. Yes, I'm going to give you. I'm the DSCP server. Good. So discover is something where the client is trying to shout on top of their voice, trying to send a broadcast. Because see, when you don't know, you do what? You shout. Now, who is this guy, man? Who is this guy? You shout. So that is called broadcast. So broadcast is always not good. But then, you don't know. Like suppose somebody has parked his car in front of the gate. So you see, there will be an announcement. 1,000 crowd in a marriage function or in a hall. Somebody will announce. There is a car with so-and-so plate number is parked on the you know, in front of the gate. Please move it. Why is disturbing the whole crowd? Because you don't know whose car it is. So when it comes to broadcast, it is one too many. Now what happened? DSCP knows. Okay, somebody is asking me this IP addresses and all. So he offers. And then finally, what happened? This information is getting exchanged. Now, I am not going in depth for Dora because I told you, this is something which you should know. We are not doing routing switching. We are doing security. Now, here comes a normal process. This is a normal process where somebody is discovering, somebody is offering, somebody is requesting, somebody is acknowledging. So, who is discovering? Definitely, client. Who is going to offer DSCP server? Who is going to request client? Who is going to offer server? Who is going to acknowledge? Okay, so discover comes from the client. Offer comes from the server. Request comes from the client. Acknowledge comes from the server. Bidirectional communication. Okay. You can see the slide. You can see the arrows. Here. Now the problem is <coughs> somebody notice that we can spoil this whole process. We can do what? We can do man in the middle attack. So man in the middle attack is very common. So somebody enters into this process where somebody is trying to discover that is DSCP client and DSCP server is offering. <coughs> So, man in the middle attack, what he does? Like, he is going to create a fake DSCP server. Can you see here? Fake. You can call it rogue. Or you can call it illegitimate server. So, there are different terms. You can have a fake DSCP server. You can have a rogue DSCP server. Now, see. I am feeling now, now I, my... I am feeling thirsty. I am a trainer. There are you no know, whole class is sitting in front of me. So I am telling I want I need a glass of water. So what will happen? There will be four or five people offering me a glass of water or a bottle, water bottle. But I am going to take only one water bottle and I am going to sip it. I am not going to take five ten water bottles and drink it. I am a human being, man. At a time, I can drink one glass of water, not five bottles. So, see, my understanding is I am thirsty. Somebody is offering me water bottle. So, what I will do? I will take the one which is very nearest to me. Somebody is very sitting very next to me. Why I will go in the end? Why I will go to the, uh, uh, one kilometer for water when I am getting water very next to me? So, same way. When a fake illegitimate server is offering them an IP address, they blindly take it. They never think. Because see, when I when somebody is offering me water, I will never think, okay, it's a water man. What, what will happen? Let me drink it. At present, I need water man. 
So in this circumstances, the fake DSCP server is offering them a subnet and IP addresses which are of a particular, you know, I'm telling you, know, it's a man in the middle attack. The attacker motto here is to rob the data. Attacker motto is to enter into your data, enter into your communication and find out what is going on between you and your server. He want to steal that data. He want to rob your data. He is doing a man in the middle attack. And why you want somebody should read your letter? Somebody should read your data. Nobody likes that, no. You know, you travel in some public transport and you try to send some messages. You see, people are peeping in your phone. <laughs> I don't know what they are looking at the. Phone. You know why, why they are looking. But there are people who will continuously look at the phone. Now you are typing something to your girlfriend and they are watching. I am sending a smiley, you are sending a heart and they are watching. Somebody is doing a man in the middle attack. Man. You don't like it. No, you will always hide. If he is continuously watching you, you might see him you know, with angry, this look also. So all these things happen. In the man in the middle attack, the, the hacker or the attacker is trying to rob your data by giving you an IP address of a wrong server and then you will be sending your data gateway also. You, you will send the data to this guy, he will read the data, he will send it to the internet and finally it will. Legitimate server is not able to offer the IP addresses. Illegitimate server is offering the IP addresses. This is that ESCP spoof attack. Why there is a term called spoof? So spoof means fooling. Spoofing means what? Fooling. Manipulating. Somebody is manipulating. Somebody is fooling you. You are asking IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS. And he is giving you all wrong information. Now see. In your company, there are chances that hundred percent nobody is going to be like complete hundred percent. The company is IT oriented. All are not technical experts. There are only few, few people who are technical experts. Accountants are there. HR people are there. Receptionist is there. What they know about IP addresses? They don't know anything about IP address. They don't know about subnet mask. They don't know about default gateway. They know is what their internet should work. They don't know who is giving them internet. Somebody might offering them internet. They are happy. But they don't know that their information is being robbed by someone. So DSCP spoof attack. In DSCP spoof attack, the data, there is a man in the middle attack. The clients are being fooled with the fake IP addresses. They are not able to take the IP addresses from the legitimate server. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Guys, are you sleeping or what? <laughs> yes, Mujahid is telling, yes, Vivek. What about others? See, guys, please pay attention. Okay? And please be attentive. You, you are getting this course. Okay. You are lucky. I'm teaching you. Okay. I'm sharing you my knowledge. So be attentive. Don't go to sleep. In fact, don't sleep and listen the lecture. Sit down. Okay. So yes. So next come is what? When there is a spoofing, then there is a mitigation. Because see, you can't, you know, you can't just let the attack take place. You want to stop that attack. And to stop that attack, that term is what? Mitigation. So in order to mitigate, in order to mitigate an attack, that is DSCP spoof attack, you go for DSCP snooping. 
Snooping is a term. Snooping means what? Listening silently. Eavesdrop. Listening silently. Eavesdrop. So here what happened? No, you blame. I'm just telling you in the layman term. You started blaming switch. Was what is this man? Somebody came and did man in the middle attack. He he brought his fake server and then he started giving IP addresses and blah blah. And then you started shouting switch. So switch is telling sorry boss. I am not involved in DSCP. I'm just following what somebody gave me the broadcast. I forwarded the broadcast. I'm an intelligent device switch. So whenever I receive a broadcast on one port. I forward it on all the other port except the port from where I have received the broadcast. This is my job. Huh. But if you tell me that <coughs> I want to reach this MAC address, I will do unicast. Why I will do broadcast? So I am intelligent in that. But then you are telling me that there is a man in the middle attack, DSCP server, some illegitimate DSCP server is offering you some IP addresses to the client that I don't know. Or you do one thing, you educate me for this attack. So now DSCP snooping is nothing but you are educating your switch to understand this attack. And that is why the term is what? Snooping. Attack is called spoofing. And mitigation is called what? Snooping. So DSCP snooping is the Cisco feature. Okay. Now what happened when you configure DSCP snooping? There's one single command, IPDSCP snooping. As soon as you give this command, the whole switch. Achha, one more thing. Why this attack took place? Because there is a hierarchy. Cisco always asks you to do hierarchy. What is this hierarchy? Three tire hierarchy. Okay. Earlier we used to have like that core layer. Then you have distribution and then you have access layer. Core. On the top, distribution in the middle and access layer where the users are connected. Now we have spine leaf. So still we are having access layer huh? and distribution layer. Sometimes we have collapse core also. So now you see we are having three layers, core layer, distribution layer and access layer. Users are on access layer. Legitimate DSCP server are on core layer. So when the broadcast is being sent by the clients, the broadcast has to reach the core layer. But here what happened? The illegitimate server is on the access layer. So he immediately offers. So what I will do when I configure DSCP snooping, my command, this command immediately make all the port as what? Untrusted. Untrusted means what? Untrusted means what? You are not supposed to offer. Uh, you, you have gone to some religious places. Many must have be religious minded. So you go to some, some mosque or some church or some mandir. You see there are people sitting outside those you know, religious places. For what? They are begging. They are asking you some benefits, monetary benefits. They are asking money from you. Now, as a rich man, like you know, you are a rich person, network engineer, earning very well. Somebody, instead of you offer them money, one beggar offers you money. <laughs> you will be very angry. You say, what man, I am not a beggar. You are a beggar. I have to give you. You should not give me. So, who is going to offer the money? The rich person is going to offer the money to the poor person. The, the beggar is not offering you. So if I'm talking about, if I'm telling you that this is an excess layer, there are all beggars in this layer. That is, all those are client PCs, all those are DSCP client. Now, how can a DSCP client offer something? Who offers? DSCP server offers. Where is DSCP server? In the core layer. So when you configure DSCP stopping, what happens? All the ports are converted into what? Untrusted. And what is the definition of untrusted? Untrusted means nobody is allowed to offer anything on this port. You can do discover. You can request, but you cannot offer and acknowledge. This is the drawback. So what happened? 
in the first slide you see the client is asking for an ip address tscp server is also offering legitimate illegitimate tscp server is also offering but client immediately takes it from fake dscp server this is the attack but now what happened the fake dscp server is offering but just because the port is untrusted switch is going to block and put that port into error disabled state switch is now intelligent you remember i told you why you started shouting at switch boss what happened man because of you there was an attack so now switch said no i am now intelligent i can immediately block those messages or those offers from the untrusted port and finally what happened the legitimate server is offering the ip address and the illegitimate server is blocked from offering any ip address and then the attack is mitigated see the slide this is an untrusted port i will block this dscp offer this is a trusted port i will allow the dscp offer so that the port which are going towards legitimate dscp server that is on core layer will be trusted the ports which are connected to <coughs> pcs which are connected on access layer okay so practical is possible here i tried it in uh, if i will show you okay sometime it may be here but we will do the practical for it i will show you i will show you how to give the command how the things work okay it is not possible to do practical for all the all the stuff there are limited practicals but yes i will do practical for dscp spoof attack i will do practical and i will show you okay i hope you understood dscp spoof attack the next very important attack is what ip spoof attack now ip spoof attack is also very common okay because in ip spoof attack what happened the user okay one more thing i forgot to tell you is my dscp server or my dscp uh, my switch who is educated for this attack will maintain a dscp snooping table in this snooping table he will write down the vlan id he will write down the port id he will write down the mac address of the legitimate users and he will maintain a database like you see dscp server maintains a database dscp server always maintain a database of ip addressing like to whom he is giving the ip address what time what is the lease the lease when is going to be the lease end okay what is the uh, who, who is the guy like what is the mac address of this guy everything who is going to maintain that dscp server but here it is not dscp server who is maintaining this here it is the switch who is going to maintain the snooping table and this snooping table carries the vlan id port id mac address ip address subnet mask what it is given all all the database clear so it becomes very important or intelligent move can you see here it is written in the slide also dscp snooping is a catalyst cisco catalyst feature that determines which port can respond to the dscp request trusted port can source all dscp messages untrusted port can source a request only okay as i told you if a beggar gives you money you will immediately kick him <laughs> because he say boss i am the rich guy i am the person who is going to give you you are not the person to give me ha huh, but when you go inside you are beggar in front of god <laughs> that is the fact you ask god na no? you raise your hand and ask come on give me money god i promise you i will help others i will do good deeds i will do this 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 and you start asking inside the church or inside the mosque but when you come out you become king then you start giving money to the beggars and you think you are the king 
told you know opposite <laughs> so just giving example try to understand so yes ds fake dscp servers cannot offer anything okay so a dscp binding table is built for untrusted port which carries the client mac address ip address lease time binding type vlan number and port id so when i when i talk about ip spoofing ip spoofing is nothing but you are trying to take the ip address from your neighbor from okay and then you start ip spoofing means what i know you're pretending to be someone else like for example one guy is there mr x he kills someone and he leaves the traces that he is mr y so what will happen the police will catch y instead of x so what he did he spoofed he took the name of his friend y he is actually x but he is pretending to be y and then who being caught definitely y so many times in in this murder cases and all you know wrong people are being caught i don't know bad luck and the main culprit is free so yes in ip spoofing is an attack where a host is assigned an ip address and expected to so if i if my parents had given me one beautiful name i should carry that name from my from my childhood to my till my death all my identification has to be same everywhere in college in school in office marriage certificate everything but now you see in movies and all there they are spoofing they are you no know, they are manipulating they are hiding their names and doing crimes they are not giving the original name so ip spoofing is an attack where the user where the attacker is pretending to be someone else and then he sent the packet he spoofs or he manipulate the source of the packet he manipulate no doubt all these are attacks it is not as simple only a hacker only a cracker only a person with intelligent intelligent mind or who is an expert can do all the stuff but yes this is an attack my job is to protect this attack my job is to mitigate this attack so a host is assigned an ip address and it is expected to use that address for all the traffic but a rogue or compromised host pc doesn't necessarily play by those rules it can use legitimate address or it can begin to use spoof address borrowed like you know i am i am i know that my you know this particular person is not available so i know i can take his pc and try to send some mail so what will happen when i use his pc and send mails that particular id that particular mac address that particular ip address is being shown in the packets so what happens when he come back tomorrow he'll be caught but no doubt he can prove that he was not present that day but then who was present now what is we have cct cameras and all earlier we, we never know somebody is sitting on your pc and doing something okay watching something <laughs> next day somebody is coming and see oh the history shows that he was watching something you know he is he feel ashamed because somebody else must have used his pc or laptop and did that and he is being caught so ip spoofing is an attack where the person is trying to manipulate the person is trying to spoof the address this practical is not possible okay dscp spoofing i can show you so what is the mitigation so when when there was dscp spoof attack there was dscp snooping when there was ip spoof attack there is ip source guard who is going to mitigate this attack but for this attack also you need dscp snooping to be configured on the switch so yes i am configuring dscp snooping in the beginning now this mitigation also helps me in ip spoofing so when i go configure ip source guard switch is telling me boss 
how can you spoof the IP address? Like, you know, everybody knows that I'm Munawar Khan. Now somebody comes and asks me, sir, I want to give this cash to Mr. Vijay or some Michael. I will say, yes, I am Michael only. I am Vijay only. But my switch or my people know me that, no, I am not Vijay, I am not Michael. Then why I am pretending? That means I am fooling. I am trying to steal somebody's money by pretending Vijay or Michael. So yes, my switch now are, has become very intelligent during because of the DSCP snooping, he has built the database and in the database, he has clearly written that this port belongs to so-and-so VLAN. This port, this port carries the MAC address of this PC and this PC was given this IP address. How can he pretend to be some other IP address? This is the beauty of IP source guard that he will monitor all those untrusted ports for fake IP addresses. He has already maintained the database of MAC address, IP address, VLAN ID, everything. So switch is telling me, like for example, you go and you know make a passport. So when you're making a passport, you always give the original documents. Now you can't fool the government that no, this is not my date of birth. Because it is clearly written in your birth certificate, in your uh, in your uh, leaving certificate that this is your birth date. So how can you fool? You are giving a document to make a passport which carries all the information. How can you fool it? Okay. In fact, during the making of passport, you might be married also. So if you go and get married second time by cheating someone for some money or something like, you know, some business or your intention is to kill that lady for any wild reason, you will be caught. Why? Because if you try to change your name, your documents, your ID will prove it that yes, this is the guy and this is not the guy. He is giving wrong information. So many times you say you go to, uh, you know, you go to airport, they will say this, you will say this is my ticket. So they'll say, okay, come on, show me your ID. <laughs> so ticket name and the ID name should be same. Huh, unless you have make a fake passport, it's okay. But then again, it is a fake passport. You are doing some crime. It's not a legitimate due, uh, document. It is illegitimate. You have fake. If you are caught, you are jailed. Getting it, guys? So IP source guard is the mitigation where, where you are looking into the MAC address, where you are looking into the IP addresses. Okay. You are checking. You means I'm talking about switch. See, this is an untrusted port with source guard. I check my binding table and your source IP address does not match the one via DSCP. So this traffic is denied. If you see this statement. Clear? Just one minute, huh? just drink water and come. One minute. Don't feel bad. I'm just telling you, I'm your trainer, so I can shout at you also. Okay. But I really want to deliver, I want to give you the best. Try to understand. Okay. So rather wasting, you know, I, I, I won't answer. I'm just telling you. For the first time, I won't answer all stupid questions. I will just see those questions. Huh? If you are asking me, I immediately explain you what is the difference between dynamic and because that is part of your lecture session. Okay. So what is next? I told you the third attack is ARP spoofing. Now you are already aware of ARP address resolution protocol. You have studied in CCNA. So you know what exactly happens. Now somebody again doing man in the middle attack. He's poisoning this R process. Because see, I'm asking who is my gateway? 10.1.1.1, the router. 
I want to go there. Give me your MAC address, man. PC A is asking who is ten one one one. That is my gateway. Come on, give me your MAC address, man. I want to come to you. But who is responding? B. B is an attacker. B is a fake guy. He is entering into the R process and he is giving the reply that yes, yes, I am. I am that router. I am your gateway. Come on, take this MAC address. So what happens? A write down the fake MAC address. The man in the middle attack takes place. He write down the MAC address of B, who is an attacker, and he sends all his information to B, thinking that this is a router. This is my gateway. And there, this happens that there all your traffic will first come to B. B will read the data and send it over. C and then send C will send it to internet or wherever network and then when the return traffic come reply again C will receive and C will give it to B why because C think B is A this guy has pretended himself to be A as well as C for C he has pretended to become A and for A he has pretended to become what C. Because he is doing what man in the middle attack. There are cases there where people, you say no middleman, the agent, they will never allow the customer and the owner to talk to each other. <laughs> you will always say whenever you want to talk about the uh, selling of your flat or lease, always talk to me. So what will happen? Every information he will pass to the owner, and because of that, he will get commission from both owner also and the clients. <laughs> this is his job. That is why he is called middleman. No? He is called agent. So this is the thing here. Okay. In ARP poisoning, what happened? In ARP spoof attack, what happened? The B is pretending. He is spoofing. He is fooling. Okay. And he is giving wrong information to he, A. And how to mitigate that? Dynamic ARP inspection. Again, DSCP snooping plays an important role. If I know that you, ha you have so-and-so MAC address, that is hardware address, so I know what is the MAC address of B as a client. I know what is the MAC address of C as a gateway. I know what is the MAC address of A as a client. So if A is a client and B is a client and C is the router, if B pretends to be C or B pretends to be A, immediately the switch stops him. Boss, how can you pretend? How can you be A or how can you become C? I know you. I know your MAC address. I know your IP address. I know your port ID. I know every detail. I have... Already my boss configured for DSCP snooping. I know each and every detail of this guy. How can he pretend? How can he do man in the middle attack? How can, how can he do R poisoning? So R poisoning attack can be mitigated through dynamic ARP inspection. Dynamic ARP inspection. Correct? Vinay, Mujahid, Adnan. Guys, answer me. There is Vivek. Vinay, Vinay. Vinay is not angry with me. <laughs> okay. So, guys, I hope you understood what is dynamic ARP inspection. In again, dynamic ARP inspection also, again, there is the concept of untrusted port and trusted port. Because my switch has become now intelligent. Okay. See, guys, it is not important that you do each and every practical of each and every topic. It is not possible. Because see, these are all a setup where a lot of stuff is there. Okay. There is a situation, there is a, you know, where you will be learning practically also things. Like, I won't do theory. Only theory for AST firewall. Then you'll say, oh, sir, I, I know we are bored with this theory only. <laughs> I will definitely teach you ASA practically. There will be a lectures on 
firepower threat defense ftds ngips next generation ips and there will be a, a practical also getting it it is because see you have to you can build it but then how you are going to how how you are going to make an attack because that is not our job no until unless you are a hacker also you can do that and you can mitigate that okay. so there are certain things which we can do yes we can do stp we can do tscp we can do we uh, vlan uh, vlan uh, this thing so there are certain things we can we can do it okay we will do it not an issue okay but you cannot see all those practicals not possible because in these practicals you will be needing hacking tools you are not here to learn hacking we are here to learn mitigation techniques clear and this is our all like you know that is you know they are just presuming that this can happen it is not necessary that everything will happen in your network but you have to be ready with mitigation techniques you should know that this is my goal because see when you buy a new flat you without fail spend money on the locks safety door nobody will come and tell you it is not necessary that you in your lifetime you will have some thefts theft you know it should not not happen also <laughs> but there is a chance that it might happen and there is a chance that it might not happen in your lifetime nobody robs you nobody comes in your house and kill someone no not possible but yes you you always do a provision you you always buy a good lock you always see that safety measures are taken that is why nowadays when they sell flats or you know they sell the apartment in the tower they will give you all the facilities alarm system gas alarm system fire alarm system okay they will give you safety doors they will give you camera uh, video phones to talk to the security personnel they will send you approval they will send you the picture of the guy who is coming to your house everything clear so we have finished dscp spoof we have finished ip spoofing we have finished arp spoofing and i in fact explain you how to mitigate those spoof attacks spoofing means fooling we want to stop that attack we have to mitigate those attacks so you have to understand that configure it in the switch network because this is layer 2 attacks clear i hope you understood this topic i hope you like the session thank you very much we'll meet tomorrow okay take care good night mujahid sahil vivek vishwajit sharat okay thank you adnan faizan all of you take care god bless you okay bye